Before we can begin to defend moral realism, it is important to first define what the term means to avoid confusion. It is constantly misrepresented and sometimes people who attempt to argue against moral realism end up revealing they are moral realists themselves but didn't realize it. So it would be good to first define what it is and what it is not. Andrew Fisher says, Realism holds that moral judgments can be true or false, that sometimes they are true, and that what makes them true is independent from people's or groups of people's beliefs, judgments, or desires. Nathan Nobbis says, Moral realists think that moral judgments are beliefs that attempt to represent moral reality, that these beliefs are sometimes true, and that they are made true by objective or stance-independent moral properties. Ruth Schaefer Lando says, Moral realism is the theory that moral judgments enjoy a special sort of objectivity, such as judgments where true or so independently of what any human being, anywhere, in any circumstance, whatever, thinks of them. A good way to understand what moral realism is, is to compare it to science. To be clear, I'm not saying moral realism is a science. I'm using the study of science as an analogy. Just about everyone agrees the study of science is meant to be objective. We look for data in the real world and try to build theories, based on our shaping principles, about what that data means. Sometimes we disagree on how to interpret or read the data, but we still agree science is not dependent on our subjective opinion. That in fact, there is a real world beyond our senses we can discover and look for. Moral realism functions in a similar manner. Beyond our cognition, there are actual moral facts we are discovering and learning about. We can tap into this through a cognitive sense, similar to how we can discover the external world through our five senses. Then, we can use these moral facts to better operate in reality. More importantly, moral facts would be true even if no humans believed them. If the eugenics proponents had won the debate and convinced the entire world to adopt the theory of eugenics, it would still be morally wrong to murder the mentally handicapped. It would be morally wrong regardless of what everyone thought. Therefore, we must realize when someone says moral realism must be false because there are various forms of morality around the world, depending on the culture, they must realize this doesn't show moral realism is false. For the very same reason, the existence of competing scientific theories does not show science is subjective or based on the culture or individual. In moral realism, this would only show humans are not perfect and not masters at understanding what moral facts are. Just like when various groups disagree about science, it only means we as humans have not mastered our understanding of the universe yet and need more data to settle disputes. So the first thing to note is moral facts are not dependent on humans. Humans are simply trying to discover what moral facts and duties are. And we are not perfect or finished in this endeavor, just like we have much to learn when it comes to science. The next thing we need to remember is moral facts are not necessarily subjective just because moral actions happen between humans. Some try to argue for moral relativism or non-cognitivism by saying because moral actions happen between humans and because humans are not necessary beings, morality must be subjective because it shows it is dependent on humans, which need not exist. However, this doesn't work either. Just because moral facts are manifested in moral actions, this doesn't mean morality is subjective or made up by humans. In the same way, the laws of logic would still be true, even if humanity never wrote them down. If the universe never existed, the laws of logic and causality would still be true even though there would be no physical examples of causality to observe. The laws would still be true, even if there was nothing to act in accord with them. In the same way, moral actions between humans are just manifestations of objective moral facts and duties. Even if someone gave a complete evolutionary account of how morality arose in humans, that would just explain how we came to understand moral facts and duties. It would not explain what they are, so this fact would also not mean morality has to be subjective. The next thing to remember is moral realism does not necessarily imply moral universalism. In my experience, this is one of the biggest confusions. Many assume if you're a moral realist, then you have to be a moral universalist. 
and assume unbreakable moral laws. This is the view that some action is always wrong according to a general principle, but not all moral realists have to hold to this. For example, just because I'm a moral realist, that doesn't mean I'm going to think it is always wrong to kill. Circumstances can be seen to play a role for the moral realist in interpreting moral actions. For example, one could say it is objectively wrong to kill in a situation where one would kill someone for personal pleasure. However, one could say it is the morally right decision to kill a man holding a gun to an innocent child in order to save the child. A moral realist could say the morally right decision will depend on the circumstances, not necessarily just blatant and sweeping rules. Just like in mathematics, each part of the equation determines the right solution. Each circumstance will play a role, like part of an equation, in determining the morally right thing to do. Finally, there are natural versions of moral realism, and we'll look at these more closely in another video. In my defense of moral realism, I'll argue moral facts and duties would exist in a way similar to mathematics. They are not physical properties or entities. You cannot discover them through your five senses, but they are abstract truths we learn about that govern reality. So now that we understand what moral realism is and what it is not, we can proceed with reasons and evidence that infer a moral realistic understanding of reality.